she is a liquid terminator in the show and a guy's like taking a piss and then he turns around and washes his hands and then the urinal that she was becomes a human. I was like, wait, what? what? <laughs> all right, let's start the show. Oh, okay, yeah, sorry, we got the, stuff to do. Yeah. Real quick, you've seen the fan art of all the Sonic characters as urinals, right? Let's see the show. Yep. <laughs> hey, everyone, welcome to Inside Game Newly for Thursday. That's right, happy Independence Day! Da, 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 da. It's America's Independence Day, mm -hmm. just in the, in the case that you were wondering. Yeah, for us. Uh, it's no secret that the Xbox One lost this generation. No, America! Yeah, <laughs> number one! It lost the generation. Damn it. The console was snake bitten from the start. Who could forget its disastrous rollout at E3 back in 2013? I couldn't. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of getting fans hyped, the console immediately became a punchline, and Microsoft got a reputation for treating gamers like a piggy bank. Yeah. How dare we want to share our games or play offline? That's we're stupid. Maybe we're the problem. <laughs> TV, TV, <laughs> TV. While Microsoft has stopped releasing sales figures for the console, earlier this year it was estimated that the Xbox One family of consoles had sold about 41 million units, less than half of what the PlayStation 4 has sold. <sighs> Lawrence, right. what happened? Uh, been a bit of a disaster. Oh. It's just, no, slow out, slow out the gate, but maybe not a total disaster, okay. maybe. Funny thing happened, Microsoft has rebounded in the last few years with a new strategy and a bunch of new studios hard at work on games. Oh, so that's weird. What people yeah, want. That sell a console, yeah. yeah, it's made a bunch of positive moves, encouraging features like cross-play and accessibility that have gotten praise from a lot of gamers like us. <laughs> We rise. That's right. <laughs> to the top. So yeah, despite all odds, Microsoft is bouncing back and it's in surprisingly good shape going into the next generation. We think that's largely due to the work of one man. Only one Only person. one guy. One huh? man all stands right. against the darkness. Phil Spencer, saluting you like we salute America, Phil. We do love Phil. We're gonna look at basically how he brought the Xbox back from the brink of disaster okay. today. Oh wow, an expose, if you will. Yeah, like we said, this generation started off really, really badly for Microsoft oh. and it all began with the now infamous rollout, the Xbox One at E3 2013. At the time, the Xbox 3 360 had been Microsoft's most successful console yet, selling more than 85 million units on the backs of exclusive franchises like Halo and Gears of War. The 360 was neck and neck with the PlayStation 3 all generation and it established Microsoft as a true third pillar of the gaming industry after Sony and Nintendo. What happened next though, Lawrence? Yeah, Microsoft proceeded to just throw it all away in the course of one E3 presentation. <laughs> so to be fair, it was actually like two separate yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah they did around a, that E3 time. But uh -huh. it was all a joke. Yeah, yeah, they did a media briefing first and then tried to show the games at E3. Actually Ooh. didn't have any games, so yeah. During the presentation, they announced a new console and they quickly made everyone hate it with a alleged number of features. Xbox, Snap, NFL. Xbox, Snap, Machinima app. God. <laughs> yeah, among those, it would require a persistent internet connection. Whoa. Could not play used games. And it would come with a Kinect. But I didn't want it with a Kinect. Yeah, well, well it comes bad. with it. Right. So you get it, so you uh, can do this. Xbox stop, app, Snap. Stop playing, stop, volume, <laughs> stop, volume's too loud, volume down. Oh, and it was $500, cover that Kinect that nobody wants, which was $100 more than the PlayStation 4. Oh. So. It's, it's like they saw the PS3 reveal and said, us We now. wanna do that. Me, yeah. yeah. I what if I overreach and charge way too much. So Microsoft also tried to portray the Xbox One as a living room entertainment device when, wow, most people just wanted to play games. It's got an HDMI pass through, Lawrence. And all sorts of transistors. <laughs> it still has that. It still it does, and does. why? Uh, no one uses it, it I don't doesn't, yeah. We all have HDMI switchers. It's like $30. Almost immediately it became very clear that Microsoft's E3 was a mess of epic proportions. Yeah, they really hamstrung themselves right <laughs> at the time. As Kazaku put it at the time, what could should have been a triumphant exclamation point the day the next gen console wars began in earnest instead turned into a disaster I don't think any of us saw coming. Oh, Microsoft's rivals immediately pounced. Sony got a huge ovation at E3 after they said they wouldn't impose any restrictions on used games. Thus kicking off the time uh, of, uh, we won't uh, have uh, a thing, so let's clap for yeah, it. No, yeah, no. Now it's microtransactions, but dear God. They also released the now infamous instructional video about how to share used games on the PlayStation 4. It was a corporate dig that also went very, very viral. It was just this. Yeah. That was it. That was it. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> also, then Microsoft immediately tried to backtrack. Uh, soon after E3, Microsoft put out a blog announcing that it was nixing some of the most hated features like the persistent internet connection and the no used games. But it was too late. The Xbox One's reputation was permanently damaged. That's right. The failed rollout of the Xbox One prompted massive changes at Microsoft. Uh, what happened after that presentation there, Lawrence? Yeah, uh, shortly after the head of Xbox, Don Matrick, left the company. Oh. Yeah, lost his parking space nearly immediately. Oh, no. And Microsoft shook up management across the entire division, actually. Mm -hmm. So to their credit, they were like, something's wrong and we gotta we gotta readjust right now so good, yeah. they did it pretty quickly and that's when our lord and savior our hero mm -hmm. our gaming master phil spencer enters the arena. He was born under like a shooting star or something, right. right? Something special. A comet just grazed by Earth's atmosphere into the back of a 1983 Ford Pinto when <laughs> Phil Spencer came into being. 
Uh, Ford even make the Pinto? I don't know, who cares? Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella announced in the spring of 2014 that Spencer was being promoted the head of the Xbox division. Good call. Uh, so this is something not a lot of people know. Spencer's actually a Microsoft lifer. He started the company in 1988 wow. as an intern and oh. has worked his way up through the ranks. No just... wonder he knows so much. But when he took over Xbox, the division was at a low point. Uh, he actually described a meeting he had with his staff about a month into the job. Spencer told Eurogamer, quote, the team was in a world of pain. <laughs> yeah, no sh we hadn't done our best work with the announce of the Xbox One. The product we built wasn't meeting the expectations of our customers. Market share was taking a nosedive and it was painful to read all the headlines. Oh. Plus, most importantly, the Xbox team thought that the leadership team had gone totally tone deaf about what our customers were demanding from us. Phil Spencer was exactly correct. On the uh, nose, man. Yeah. To win back the team's trust, he did a little test. At the meeting, Spencer gave them some confidential information that wasn't going to be public for a few months. It was a test to see if everyone could trust each other. No one leaked it and Spencer called it a significant milestone in our journey to rebuild trust between the leaders and the team. That's very, very smart. What do you, what do you think he told them? I'm trying to figure out what that might have been at the I time. Wanna, I want to ask him though. Yeah, that's really, really smart. It's probably something that. real simple like he's like, I can turn invisible whenever I want. Don't like, tell anyone. Watch this, and he throws up a sheet and just runs yeah. into the wall. <laughs> like, oh my God, he's David Copperfield. All right, Lawrence, he got to work after that. What happened? One of the first things he did was to kill off the Connect, which I noticed that right away. Smart when they announced the Connect on Xbox, it was like a few months after Spencer took over, and I was like, "That's it. This yeah. is our guy." Uh, because man, that was a terrible idea. Such a business thing of wanting to have a camera and a microphone in your home. I get it, because Amazon's doing it too, and Google's doing it. The beginning of the it doesn't have a thing. But that let them knock down the price, though. Exactly, which they made it competitive with the PlayStation 4, but the PlayStation 4 is already off to a running start, and yeah, once you have yeah. that foothold, it just grows and grows. But the Xbox One still had problems, especially when it comes to exclusives. That was highlighted in 2017 when Microsoft canceled Scalebound, anticipated action game from Platinum Games. That was a massive blow, and despite some good exclusives like Sea of Thieves, Gears of War 4, and Sunset Overdrive, which is awesome, by the way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he Please this. play that. The Xbox One never caught up to Sony, which cranked out well-received exclusives like God of War and Horizon Zero Dawn. Here's the thing, even though Microsoft lost its console generation, it's still did really well where it counts, which is making money. In the 2018 fiscal year, Microsoft's annual gaming revenue was more than $10 billion. Holy sh that's actually less than Sony's 17 billion, but it's more than Nintendo's 9.7 billion. That's really good. They fell right in the middle of the pack with selling way less units. Not all of that was from Xbox, but it still shows that games are making Microsoft a lot of money. And while the PS4 won this generation, Spencer decided on a new course going forward. Yeah, his division was going to beef up the Game Pass subscription service and focus on its upcoming streaming service project, X Cloud. That's how we should salute them. Spencer's idea was to look beyond <laughs> the idea of console generations and to keep the base of users they had acquired over the years. It's that base that was more important than what hardware they were playing on, yeah, basically, right, Lawrence? Yeah, yeah, it's cool. Of course, they, you know, still need games. No. Uh, it's a console. They went on a buying spree uh, to invest in the future. They acquired well known developers Obsidian, Ninja Theory, and In Exile. And contrary to what a lot of people were suspicious of, Microsoft is apparently keeping hands off their new acquisitions. In Exile founder Brian Fargo told Eurogamer last year that Microsoft wouldn't influence the kind of games his studio made. He said, quote, they've not once said, we'd really love you to do more of this or less of that. That's never been a conversation. Really? It's going to be up to us and very much us talking to our fans about the things they'd like to see. We're not necessarily walking away from isometric games at all. There's still some great things you can do with it that haven't been done yet. And lo and behold, they've announced Wasteland 3. Oh, so that's yeah. cool. Spencer also made some gamer-friendly moves that helped soften people's feelings toward Xbox, aside from just snapping up tons of developers and tossing that connect to the curb. Good God, please run it over with a <laughs> steamroller or something. Microsoft teamed up with Nintendo, of all people, to promote crossplay on games like Minecraft. Of course, yeah. It was a very smart move, and it also managed to make Sony look anti-consumer nice as it dragged its feet on that very feature. Yeah, Spencer also greenlit the Xbox Adaptive Controller, which I still think is one of the smartest moves I've seen. A new peripheral to make gaming more accessible to a wider variety for gamers. Right, and that thing's, it's, he said it's compatible on anything. Yeah, right. Yeah, it works on yeah. anything. It, it's basically the Xbox controller template, which is an HID compliant thing. So right. works on Windows, works on Xbox. Yeah. yeah, I don't normally call Microsoft the Mother Teresa of gaming, but- it's Pretty awesome to it, do. It is a pretty charitable thing to do where you go, hey, no one else has made this thing for people with disabilities. We're trying to just get people to play video games. And then if Sony goes, no, it doesn't work on our hardware. And it's like, then you look like a dick. You look like a total dick. Well, it's something I've thought about a lot as I get older. I'm like, what happens if my sight goes away or I get arthritis? How am I going to play video games? Microsoft's got it right there. I'm like, good. I can yeah. do this until I die. Phil Spencer also took the lead uh, with a new plan to combat toxicity in gaming. Oh, good luck, Phil. Uh, it, was <laughs> good, it was good business, but it was also good PR too. Through it all, Spencer has kept talking about the future and where gaming was headed. Yeah, of course that makes sense considering that the Xbox One 
didn't exactly set the world on fire. No, well, I mean, it, it did, right? It, I mean, maybe it set a division of Microsoft on fire. It set Microsoft fire. on fire. It set their world on fire. <laughs> but, yeah. but all this also comes at a time when cloud gaming looks poised to make a breakthrough. Google is rolling out its Stadia streaming service this fall, which is a direct threat to established console makers like Sony and Nintendo. Yeah, it's so much of a threat that Sony did the unthinkable. What did they do, Lawrence? Yeah, they announced a partnership with Microsoft. <gasps> Microsoft's infrastructure to power its current and future streaming services. Wow, so, that's really smart. They're gonna get royalty checks for their Azure stuff for a while coming. You can bet Phil has smart sent business, hundreds of emails about yeah. that. Then again, Spencer isn't giving up on consoles either. At E3 a few weeks ago, he talked about the next Xbox console, which is codenamed Project Scarlet. Mm -hmm. Sexy slut. It was pretty clear that he's learned the lessons of 2013. Spencer described it as, quote, the most powerful and highest performance console we've ever designed. Mm, which is be. also what he said about Scorpio, which is true. Yeah. yeah. Scorpio is just an awesome piece of hardware. It's a great, yeah, it's a great. Yeah. Uh, company officials also made it clear that this console is designed explicitly for gaming. Not TV? Yeah, weird. Football? How, how snap, will I watch football. TV? <laughs> Xbox Snap. Yeah. Yeah. Xbox Snap, Xbox app. <laughs> <laughs> but Spencer also says, it's not the end of the world if gamers don't buy the new Xbox. He wants to sell you a game or a subscription regardless of your hardware. As he told The Verge, quote, the business isn't how many consoles you sell. The business is how many players are playing the games that they buy, how they play. If they want to stay on the Xbox One they have and stay as a great member of our community or subscribe to Game Pass, that's a great business for us. Yeah, for Microsoft and Spencer, the vision moving forward has a number of facets, new consoles, streaming, PC, and subscription services. Yeah, as he told GameIndustry.biz, the future of gaming is the ability to play the games you want uh -oh. with the people you want, whenever you want, <laughs> wherever you are, and on any device. Phil Spencer's not generally that angry like Adam was. No, no, I think he's just excited. <laughs> he's sweating like Steve Ballmer. Uh, Lawrence, we're gonna see how the Xbox does in the next generation, right? I'm really excited to see how Bill navigates the division going forward. He's made huh. so many good calls that are just completely in tune with what people want. Uh, and it's weird that he hasn't super been applauded for that, which is kind of why we're doing this. I typically like to celebrate the good things that happen as well as, you know, sh on Anthem every other week. So. I don't think this is gonna get him to follow you on Twitter. I'm sorry. He has to. He doesn't know who you are, Lawrence. Yeah. You interviewed him. You I met him. I shook his hand once. He, he forgot man. you the minute you left. Yeah. It's not uncommon for a bad console generation to kill off the company, and the Xbox One could easily have done that. But thanks to Spencer, the Xbox has lived to fight another day, and whether you own one or not, that's good news for the entire industry. Competition's always good. I think so. I'm gonna be excited for the day when we launch a Xbox app on a Nintendo Switch. It's gonna be weird. I wanna get those but achievements. Also, yeah. I want Microsoft to win because they're American. American. Yeah! America Day today. Yes! Woo! Bellevue. Yeah! Woo! Is an American to be xenophobic? <laughs> Get out of my country! Of the premium service. So Chromecast Ultra is $35. Three months is $30. What does that even Chrome mean? Chromecast Ultra might be 50? The founder's I edition did, oh, of something that's oh, not did, real. Oh, on Jesus. Google has revealed that at least 30 games will be playable on Stadia when it launches in November, including Destiny 2, Baldur's Gate 3, The Division 2, Wolfenstein, Youngblood, and Metro Exodus. Okay, but the jury's still very much 